Daddy wants me to tell you that he enjoyed your praise last night. And so I, I, I wish that we will spend another five minutes praising him. Let's go ahead. Just praise him. Sing your own song to him. Dance before him. Clap to him. Just praise him. Just your own way. He says he enjoyed the way you praised him last night. So let's do it again. Let's praise him. Let's give him all the glory, all adoration. Tell him, Daddy, you are the highest, you are the greatest, you are the oldest, you are the wisest, you are the richest. Oh, I know that you are the Alpha. I know you are the Omega. I know you are coming again. I love you, Daddy. There's no one like you, Lord. You are higher than the highest. You are greater than the greatest. You are older than the oldest. You are wiser than the wisest, O oh Lord. You are richer than the richest. There's no one like you. No one at all. Oh yes. You are the beginning of all beginnings. You are the ending of all endings. I worship you, Lord. And I know you are the unchanging changer. I know all power belongs to you. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you adoration. And I know you are returning soon. I know you are coming back for me. Oh, blessed be your holy name. That's why I'm singing hallelujah to you, Lord. My father, there's no other father like you. Wondrous. Glorious, powerful, mighty, majestic. Oh, my Father, my God, I bless your holy name. I know you are wearing light as a garment. I know my Father dwells in light that no man can approach unto. There's, there's, no, there's no Father like you, my Father. You are the best. You are the greatest, you are the strongest, you are the highest. Oh Lord, and I know you are constant, I know you are constant. I know you are faithful. There's no one like you. Blessed, 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 blessed be your holy name. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. You are the beginning of all beginnings. You are the end of all endings. Blessed be your holy name. You are the unchangeable changer. Ah, you are wonderful, my Father. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped them. My father is the highest, 
My father is the highest, is higher than the highest. My father is the highest, my father.
Hallelujah to my Father. Hallelujah to my Father. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah to my Father. of days we worship you the one who said let there be light and there was light we bow before you the one who was before the mountains were brought forth we worship you the lion of the tribe of Judah glory be to your holy name the unchangeable changer the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the Almighty, glory be to your holy name. Thank you for yesterday, Lord. Thank you for accepting our praises. We know that when praises go up, blessings will surely come down. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, my Father and my God, visit your children. Change every sorrow to joy. Wipe away all tears from our eyes. Give us a brand new beginning. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Shake hands with one or two people and say welcome to Double Portion.
tomorrow, by the grace of God, if the Lord has not returned, we will be talking about healing virtues. Tomorrow is going to be a special night set aside for healing. And so after the preaching tomorrow, every one of us will receive an anointing uh, to heal those who are sick and to make that those of us who are not sick will remain completely whole. It will go beyond that, but uh, just leave that to tomorrow. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every day it will get better. Tonight, I'll be speaking to you for a few minutes, as the Holy Spirit permits, on the oil of gladness. The text is Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. And while you are opening your Bibles, it would be a good idea if you put your hands together for the first speaker of tonight. For doing such a great job. And I also want us to appreciate, especially appreciate, uh, the choir from South Africa. That was also very good. And uh, we are saying welcome to Vine Song. Uh, we miss you the few years you have been away, so you are welcome. Now, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, not man, therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. I believe that passage is written for me. If you believe it's written for you too, say amen. amen. The purpose of this Congress, double portion, is to move you from receiving to becoming. God wants to move someone from receiving to becoming. So what do you mean by that, sir? He wants to move you from receiving a solution to your problems to becoming a problem solver. So the first portion is to take care of your own problems. The second portion is for others. The second portion is to empower you to solve the problems of others. So tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, your own problems will be rolled away. Yeah. 
And the particular person that God has in mind, I don't know him or her. From tonight onward, we'll be empowered to change the sorrows of others to joy. If you are sure you are the one, let your amen be loud. The text we read says, Thou has anointed you. God has anointed you. God, even your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness. There's an oil called oil of gladness. We will talk about that briefly. What is the purpose of oil? Apart from food, because we use oil in cooking, oil is also used for healing. If you read Luke chapter 10 from verse 30 to 37, Luke chapter 10 from verse 30 to 37. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord said there's someone, there's a boil in your armpit. And the doctor says they are very suspicious of it. Well, before you go out of here tonight, the boy will no longer be there. <laughs> if you read Luke chapter 10 from verse 30 to 37, the Bible tells us the story of the good Samaritan when he came across a man who had been attacked by highway robbers. A very interesting story because it shows that highway robbers have been they have been around for a long, long time. You will never become their victim. <laughs> that he poured oil on the wound of the man who had been attacked. Oil for healing. In James chapter 5, verse 14, James 5, verse 14, the Bible says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders and let them anoint him with oil. Oil for healing. We will talk more about that tomorrow. Oil is also used for setting people or something aside for God's use. First Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 11. First Samuel 10 from verse 1 to 11. When God was going to set apart King Saul as the first king of Israel, he was anointed with oil. Oil can be used to accelerate the promotion of somebody. Like in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11 to 13, 1 Samuel 16, from verse 11 to 13, they brought David from the bush. He was a shepherd boy. But the moment they poured oil on his head, he became a king. May I decree that even before this Congress is over, your promotion will be accelerated. <laughs> In the story of David, it is interesting to note that unless the head is right, the oil will not flow. The, the, uh, the, the kind of oil that we accelerate promotion flows on the head of the one who said it's right for it. 
oil can be used for protection. Psalm 105, verse 15. Psalm 105, verse 15, that says, Touch not my anointed, means much more than don't attack my anointed. That decree from the Most High God is not only to humans, it is also to witches, wizards, viruses, bacteria. That's why people like me during the coronavirus was confident that I can pray for all the sick and that nothing will happen to me. Because there is that decree to everybody, every force, whatever. Touch not my anointed. And from now on, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you have a major protection from every enemy. Oil, um, as I'm sure you know, is intricately involved with anointing. And the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, Isaiah 10, verse 27, the anointing destroys yokes. Oil is also useful in keeping your lamp burning. You know, in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12, Leviticus 6, verse 12, the Bible says the, the fire of God on the altar, that altar now is talking about the altar of your heart, must never go out. And I'm praying for every one of you who are here, a child of God, the fire of God upon your life will never go out. The oil must be there to keep your lamp burning so that you don't miss the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know the story of the ten virgins? Matthew 25, from verse 1 to 13. Matthew 25, 1 to 13. When uh, ten virgins went to meet the bridegroom, and some took extra oil, some didn't take extra. And by the time the bridegroom was approaching, the five foolish ones discovered that the oil was gone in their lamps. And while they went to buy, before they came, the bridegroom has arrived and has taken the five wise ones in. By the time the foolish ones came knocking at the door, he told them, I don't even know you. I pray that the fire of God in your life will never go out. <laughs> Oil is essential so that your lamp won't go out, so that you don't go into darkness. Because if, if you go into darkness, you will discover that your eyes can't see. Um, on one occasion, the light was taken off suddenly. Every one of us stood still until the light came back. Because you suddenly discover that you don't even know your way around. Uh, if there is no oil in the lamp and the lamp goes out, there will be no vision. Proverbs 28, verse, Proverbs 29, verse 18, Proverbs 29, verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, people perish. So you can see, and I can go on and on, you can see that oil is very, very important, very, very important. 
But there's a particular kind of oil called the oil of gladness. The oil of joy. And according to Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1 to 3, Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 3, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone, a woman, he said, Stop weeping, my daughter. Your sorrow will end tonight. In Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 3, Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 3, the, the, the Bible made it clear that the oil of joy is to eradicate mourning, to eradicate sorrow. Uh, and the Almighty God is talking to us tonight about the oil of gladness. Now, the oil of gladness is available tonight. How do I know? My daddy told me. Whether you know it or not, I don't choose a theme for the Congress. My father chooses the theme. And then after he has chosen the theme, he dictates the talks one by one. So if he says oil of gladness for tonight, somebody should shout hallelujah. So the, the oil of gladness is available. But you have to reach out to get a bit of it for your own use. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34, the story of the woman with the issue of blood, she reached out to touch the hem of the garment of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that hem of his garment was dripping with oil. Not something you can see with physical eyes, but it was there. She reached out. You see, the Bible says, since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. There are certain things you have to reach out to get. When the time comes tonight, I hope you will know how to reach out. The oil of gladness that can change sorrow to joy is available, but you may need to cry for it. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was passing by, something told him, Your day has come. I'm happy somebody got that one. Because for somebody, your day has come. And when he started crying and some people were trying to silence him, <laughs> He ignored them. I like the testimony of one of my, of my sisters who said, in the, she was somewhere in the auditorium and some people were sleeping. And she started crying. She cried so loud, she woke them up. Eh, you people, did it, you don't know what you came for. I know what I came for. Want to sleep? Sleep. Let me cry. God is going to answer the prayer of somebody tonight. Yeah. 
the oil of gladness is available, but you practically need to go and get it. As I'm going to tell you, and I will soon be closing. Different people come to a garden like this for different reasons. Some of us come just to enjoy the presence of the Almighty God. But some of us have certain deep-rooted problems causing us sorrow. And we have come knowing fully well that in the presence of God there is the fullness of joy. I have good news for somebody here tonight. What you have come for, you will get. I'm sure you remember the story of a lady that the baby in her womb died and the doctor said they have to evacuate. And she said to them, ah, but the, con the Congress is next week. Let me go to the Congress. If nothing happens, eh, when I return, you can come and evacuate. <laughs> and the doctor said, the baby, the baby in your womb is already dead. By now, it's almost decomposing. By the time you say you return from this, your Congress, you'll probably be dead because the poison in your womb will have spread all over the place. You say, ah, ah, it is my life now. And she came. Never forgotten that day. Because the first day, nothing happened. Second day, nothing happened. But on that Wednesday, some of the older ones say I will remember. The power of God came down so heavily on me, I had to ask for a chair to sit. As I was about to sit down, the word of God came and said, there's a woman here. The baby in your womb has been dead for days, but the baby is jumping back to life. She got what she came for. She got what she came for. In that name that's above every other name, in the name of the one who organized this Congress, you will get what you have come for. In, in, in Mark chapter 5, from verse 21 to 24, Mark 5, 21 to 24, and then 35 to 43, Verse 21 to 24, and then 35 to 43. Jairus came to Jesus Christ because the daughter was sick. He was a ruler in the synagogue. And in those days, the rulers looked down on Jesus Christ. They called him an upstart. Where do you come from? Who taught you what you are teaching? Which Bible college did you go to? They, but he needed help. He humbled himself, came to Jesus, come and help me, have mercy. You know the rest of the story. Why they were on the way, somebody stole a miracle. By the time they arrived, the child was dead. People were weeping. But the Lord told them, uh -uh, you have come. And you'll get what you came for. I decree to somebody here today, for the rest of your life, they won't gather to mourn in your house. So, there is the oil of gladness flowing freely here tonight. 
you may need to reach for it. You may need to cry for it. You may need to go for it. Violently. And there's something better than just rolling away all your sorrows tonight. Mentioning them one by one. Problems over your health, problems over your business, problems over your children, etc., etc. There's something better than that, and that is for you yourself now to become a carrier of the oil of gladness. That's the idea of the double portion. That wherever you go from now on, joy will break out. <laughs> Acts chapter 8, verse 5 to 8. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 from verse 5 to 8. The Bible says, Philip went to Samaria. And within days, there was joy in the old city. Philip was a carrier of the oil of gladness. Oh, we all know that things are difficult, particularly in our nation at this moment. Unless we want to deceive ourselves, there's a lot of pain, a lot of agony, and <laughs> quite a big measure of sorrow. I mean, the other day, we heard of somebody, a student, who fell sick, and uh, the colleagues carried him to the hospital. When they got to the hospital, the hospital asked them to come and deposit something before they can attend to their colleague. They are students. <laughs> students are not supposed to be rich. They couldn't find the money. And their colleague died. It's going to be quite a while before those students will ever forget their sorrow. But I'm decreeing to you today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, wherever you go from tonight, wherever there is sorrow, it will change to joy. It's better for you to become a carrier of joy. I mean, you had the testimony, I think it was last month, of, uh, I think one of, is it an assistant pastor or so? They called him. Please come immediately. Uh, one girl was going to be, get married, and the mother was dying on the wedding day. So the pastor drove there. You were here. You had the testimony. By the time he arrived, the mother had died. People were weeping. <laughs> so he, he said, he said, God, what do I do? Do I join those who are weeping? Or do I quickly run to my car and run away? And then he heard from God. God said, no. Dance round the dead body. And you remember the story now. Uh -huh. and, so he, and he started dancing. And the others joined him in dancing. Instead of weeping. And in almost one hour, Mama came back to life. And that name that's above every other name, somebody here tonight will become a carrier of the oil of joy.
But then when, when you now go back to our text, it says, because you love righteousness and hate iniquity, even God, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. The word there, above thy fellows, is what I want to talk about for the next three or four minutes. And then it will be time to pray. Above thy fellows means God can place you above all your peers. That among equals, you can still be number one. You see, when, when, when we were reading about Philip just now, remember in, in Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 to 6, Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 to 6, there were seven of them that were appointed to be deacons, the original deacons. And look at the qualifications of every one of the seven. Men of good reports. That means they love righteousness. They hate iniquity. Full of the Holy Spirit and power. All seven of them. But only Philip excelled in being the carrier of joy. There are many of us who are here tonight. We are already children of God. Praise God. Some of us, by the grace of God, since we got born again, had stayed away from sin. By the grace of God. One of my daughters was giving a testimony not too long ago. She said, from the day I gave my life to Jesus Christ, the Almighty God has kept me pure. And I rejoice to hear that kind of testimony. There are many of us like that. We hate sin. We don't want to have anything to do with it. Oh, yes, we, we hear all manners of stories. We hear of uh, pastors uh, doing all kinds of things. I'm not saying our pastors, so I mean pastors generally. We hear of bishops, etc., etc. And when anybody wants to point an accusing finger at the church as a whole, I always tell them, uh uh. You cannot find a counterfeit unless there is an original. There's no counterfeit 2,000 naira note. You will never find one. Why? Because there is no original. So the fact that there are some counterfeits is proof that there are some originals. Uh, let somebody shout hallelujah. But of the seven chosen, full of the Holy Spirit, of good reports, etc., etc., et apart from Stephen, who went to heaven in a blaze of glory, only Philip was referred to as the one who carried joy to a whole city. You see, 
when we are talking about double portion, almost invariably your, your mind goes to the story of Elijah and Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 2. You can read the whole story from verse 1 to 15. 2 Kings 2, 1 to 15. On the day that Elisha got a double portion of the Spirit, there were several sons of the prophets. They were called sons of the prophets because they are baby prophets on the way to becoming full-fledged prophets. And they all had the dose of the first portion. They all knew that Elijah was going to be taken away that day. They all knew, all of them. They told Elisha so. Friend, maybe you don't know that <laughs> your master is going to be taken away today. He said, I know. Keep your mouth shut. They knew. But only one fellow got the double portion. The only one who said, whatever is going to cost, okay, wherever you go, I'm going with you until you are no longer here. You know, at the end of the day, <laughs> those who are telling him, do you know your guys going today? They came and bowed down before him. Tonight, I'm going to advise you Ask a father to a son. I know some of you might be older than I. But you are not many. And even if you are many, ah, you are my spiritual children. Whatever is going to cost you, I want you to make sure you pray tonight like you have never prayed before. You know, I know many of us are looking towards, looking forward to Friday. Do you have to wait a Friday before you get your miracle? Answer me very well. Do you want to be sad for another couple of days? When do you want your miracle? You know, in Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, you can read it from verse 1 to the end. The Bible tells us about how the king has selected three presidents to look over all the princes, etc., etc. And yet, out of the three, there was still one excelling. Daniel. He said, an excellent spirit, excellent, something that excels, was found in him. And you know one of the things that distinguished him from all of them? He was a number one champion prayer warrior. I will tell you a story. Some of you have had it before. But I'm telling it for the sake of those of you who never had it. I think it was 1985. We went to South Korea for a minister's conference in Seoul. 
at that time <laughs> was the pastor of the biggest church in the whole world biggest church we hold services I think about seven times on Sunday and the auditorium was huge we could seat 50,000 people and then we'll just, they will see hold seven services on Sunday. It was the first time in my life that I heard a pastor say, those of you who have come to church this Sunday, please remember, don't come next Sunday. Why? Because those who could not come in this Sunday will then be able to come in. And when a pastor is begging, his members that if you come this Sunday, don't come next Sunday. You know what I mean by big. And at that time, <laughs> the Jim Christian Church of God was struggling. I fasted, I prayed, I've done everything. When I heard about this man, I said, I ah, will go and find out. We got there, and they told me he has a prayer mountain. And they would take all of us. People came from all over the world. Oh, I mean, all over the world. And then we, they took us to the prayer mountain on a particular day. And in the mountain, they dug little, little holes. You have to kind of climb into it to pray. And the mountain will be vibrating because there are holes all around the mountain. For your information, that was the origin of Mount Carmel. When I saw that mountain, I said, all right, there's a mountain in Ifewara. I will go and buy one. And we were asked to go and pray. So I entered into the hole and I was praying. I mean, I traveled all the way from Nigeria to South Korea. I knew why I came. Of course, I forgot time. I was praying, I think, for about three hours before it occurred to me, ah, uh, we came in a bus as a group, maybe... I should go and find out where the others are. By the time I came out, all other buses were gone except my own. And the others would have gone, but I was the only black man in the group, so that helped them to notice somebody is missing. They were furious with me. You kept us here for hours. I said, I'm sorry. I thought we came here to pray. They said, are you going to pray everything in one day? And all the way from the mountain back to town, nobody spoke to me, which was very good. Because my spirit was still roaring. I knew what I wanted. I knew why I went. Some years ago, I mean, in those days, you can't see Papa Yonggi Cho. I mean, how are you going to get close? A few years ago, some of you know this story. I went to visit our church in Seoul. And I had an opportunity now to meet Papa Yonggi Cho. When they, end, when they ushered me to his office, he, they introduced me. He said, ah, I've heard about you. Will you please pray for me? As we shook two hands, my eyes were filled with tears. Because that to me, that is the greatest proof 
that I got what I wanted when I came the last time. When you return next year, in the name that's above every other name, you will come and testify. We'll be praying in a moment. But I need to give up on, uh, an opportunity for those who <laughs> are still living in sin. The text says, you love righteousness. You hate iniquity. That's when God, even your God, can anoint you with the oil of gladness. So if you are here and you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, your sins are not yet washed away. Before we go to our session of prayer, you better run forward. If you are here and you claim to be a child of God and you are still enjoying sin, you don't hate it. You are even enjoying it. You better run forward tonight. Tonight is not a night for joking. Destiny is about to be turned around now. So if you are a backslider, please, it doesn't matter the position you have already reached in life or in church or of, of, any, of any denomination. If you know you are still enjoying sin, that you don't hate sin with a passion, come forward. Come and cry to the Almighty God for restoration. I'm going to count from one to seven. If by the time I say seven, you are not already standing before the altar, I will know you are not coming. We will pray for those who have come and then the rest of us will continue. So I'm counting now. One. Thank you, those of you who are clapping. But if you are clapping for my father, the highest, the greatest, the oldest, the wisest, the richest, clap very well. Two. Some of you are coming from very far, so hurry up. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, I can see some of you still far off. Keep coming. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. Those of us who are already in front, cry to the Almighty God. Tell Him, I don't want to have anything to do with sin anymore. I want to be living holy for the rest of my life. Save my soul. Let your blood wash away my sins. Give me the grace from now on to love righteousness and to hate iniquity. Go ahead. Talk to the Almighty God. And the rest of us, please stretch your hands towards these our brothers and sisters and it has seed for them that the Almighty God will give them genuine salvation the kind of salvation that will cause them 
to hate sin passionately. The type of salvation that will cause them, enable them to love righteousness wholeheartedly. Intercede for them. Pray for them, brethren. Pray for them. Those of you who are still on the way, hurry up now because I'm about to pray. Oh, thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word. I want to say I'm grateful on behalf of these your children who have come forward tonight to surrender their lives to you. Father, please receive them. Yeah. Forgive them. Yeah. Let your sin wash away their sins. Yeah. Save their souls, Lord. Yeah. And give them a heart that from now on we hate sin. Give them the grace from now on to love holiness. Amen. Receive them into the family of God. And when they cry to you now or any time in the future, please answer them by fire. Amen. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, those of you who have come forward, I want to rejoice with you. I want to promise you that by the grace of God from now on, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. If you turn to your left, you see a man there lifting up a, a little piece of wood. Follow him. He will take you to where some pastors are waiting. They will collect the information I need, and then they bring you back very quickly. God bless you. You can begin to go. God bless you. God bless you. Let's, let's clap for the Lord. Let's really clap for the Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Thank you, Father. Amen. Your prayers tonight will be in two sections. Section one. Everything that is causing you sorrow, you're going to cry to the Almighty God and say, Lord, with the oil of gladness that is here present, put an end to this my soul. T take them one by one. You shouldn't hurry. Name them one by one. I say, my Father, my God, the following things are still causing me sorrow and I want them gone tonight. Then part two, you will now call face to face with the most high God and say, Lord, I want to become a carrier of your oil of gladness. Before I stop praying tonight, let it be settled in heaven that I'm now a carrier of your oil of gladness. Nobody's going to stop you tonight. If you like, pray for five minutes and go. If you like, settle your case with God tonight. The altar will be open. You are free to come. And you are free to leave when you want to leave. It's up to you. 
but it takes some violent prayer to excel. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow. The altar is open now. Come if you want to. <laughs>